In this video, we're going to learn the basics of variables in Python. So variables store the information that our program works with. We can create variables in Python by assigning a value to the name of the variable that we want to create. So we could have price is equal to 50, and this would create a variable called price, and price would store the value 50. Oftentimes we think about variables as storing a value because it can be helpful to think about them this way. So here we might say that the variable price stores the value 50. And we might think of price as being a box where the value 50 is inside the box. But really in Python, technically, the value 50 is stored in memory. And we can think of price as being a label for this value. Or more accurately, we could say that the variable price references this value. There are different categories of values in Python called types. So the value 50 is what's called an integer or an int in Python. It's a number with no decimal point and numbers after the decimal point. So negative one and two would be integers, but a number like 2.5 would not be an integer. We can create multiple variables in our program. So for example, we could also create a variable called tax rate and we could set it to the value 1.15. Here the value 1.15 is not an integer. It's what's called a floating point number or a float. Floats are numbers that do have a decimal point with numbers afterwards, what we call a fractional component of a number. In mathematics, we call these numbers real numbers. Notice how the variable names we're using so far are descriptive. We know that price refers to the price of something and that the tax rate variable must refer to a tax rate. Good variable names should be descriptive like this because it helps the person reading our code to understand what our code is doing. If we had given these variables names like X and Y, it would become much less clear what type of information our program is working with or what it's going to do with that information. So we should use descriptive variable names whenever possible. As a programming convention in Python, we use lowercase letters for the words of our variable names, and we separate the different words in a variable with an underscore character we technically could use uppercase letters in our variable names, but we try to avoid this as a programming convention. There are also some hard rules about how we can name variables. So for example, we just can't start off a variable name with a digit like two. So if we try to name this variable three price and then save our program and try to run it, it's not going to work. We'll get an error. It says here, syntax error, invalid syntax. So there are certain rules about variable names that are not conventions, they're actual rules of the language itself that we need to follow. So for example, we also can't name a variable if because the word if is a special word called a keyword in Python that's actually used as part of the language itself. The equals character here is what's called the assignment operator. It's going to assign the value 50 to the variable price. Technically, 50 is what we would call an expression and the expression is going to be evaluated before it's assigned to the variable. We can have more complex expressions involving operators, and we can use variables in these operators to produce new values. So for example, we could have shipping is equal to 1050. Then we could have total is equal to price plus shipping. And so here we've created a new variable called shipping and assigned it the value 1050. And then we've also created another variable called total, and we've assigned it the value of price plus shipping. Plus is the addition operator. It's going to add two values together. In this case, the values of the variables price and shipping. And then the result is stored into the total variable. We can output the value that a variable stores using the print function. So we can have print and then open bracket and then inside the brackets, the name of the variable. And if we save our program and then run it, we'll get 60.5 because 50 plus 1050 is 60.5. By default, variables can actually change the value that they store as the program executes. So for example, we could apply the tax rate to this total to get a new total value that includes the taxes. So we could have here, total is equal to total star tax underscore rate. So here, the star character is the multiplication operator and we're multiplying the total by the tax rate to give us a new total that includes the taxes. Then down here, we could have print total, and we could print out the total after the tax rate has been applied. So we could save this and run a program. 
And now we get this after taxes total as well, printed out after the first total. So one of the really key ideas behind variables is that we can use them to keep track of a piece of information that's going to change over the execution of our program. So for example, the life meter of a player during a game, or maybe how much ammo the player has left to shoot. There are many different types of values that a variable can store. So for example, text information can be stored as a type of value called a string. For example, we could have here, customer underscore name is equal to Idris Elba. And here, we have information stored in a string. We could also store what are called Boolean values. So for example, we could have discount is equal to true. A Boolean value is going to be either true or false. So there are many different types of values in Python. There are many different types of variables as well, such as variables whose values cannot be modified and variables that belong to certain other code constructs. These ideas will be covered in future videos. So this has been the basics of variables in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.